day another winches. That's right, in today's video we're gonna get some more pipes going and we're gonna look at some other things as well, just to keep it fun because you don't want to keep on just saying, oh, here's more pipes, here's more pipes, here's more pipes. This winches, when it was at Jones house, was on the stairs. It had all of the wooden flutes on there. However, I'm not entirely sure what this winches entails. It's good because it's got a bunch of words on there that I'm not particularly sure what they are. I guess that's stop diapason, bass flute, Mizzard. The only way I'm going to find this out is by putting it together and seeing what the fudge happens. So let's sort this out and worry about the unknowns a little bit later, shall we? I've taken the top off this one because it's slightly rougher than the other ones that we've looked at so far. You may notice there's a bunch of random wires here and there. That's because some of the wires in here are broken and that's why there's some jumpers all over the place. As you can see, it's all a little bit gammy. And also because of my own stupidity, when we pulled this out of the house, I cut this one a little bit too short. And because of these two things, we're gonna have to do something I'm a little bit reluctant to do, but sometimes you just gotta do it. And that is replace the wiring loom. Oh no. And that's when this chunky stuff comes in. Yeah, this is some nice thick telephone exchange cabling. It's got plenty of color match pairs, which means it's gonna be easy to kind of figure out which one's which. We're probably gonna end up removing all the sheath, but it means that we've got a nice chunky set of cabling that we can use and then we'll wire wrap it together to make it neat afterwards. But first, before we wire in this wiggly worm, we've got to remove all of the old wiring. It's absolutely minging. Already and clean and ready for the next step. Oh, yeah! <laughs> much like the principal pipes, this is solenoid driven, much like that, so hopefully they all work. If you look, every single one of them has a wire that's connected to this middle bar. This is the positive voltage. This is usually about 15 or 16 volts, and then you'll notice that there's other wires that fall off and go into the pins that go over to the front of the box. Which is why all of these pins are wired to different wires. That's because these pins travel through the wood and connect to the solenoid on the other side. So we basically need to solder a wire onto each of these ones, which end up going off into a loom over to the circuit board that's going to be situated somewhere over there. Oh yeah, baby! Yes! Oh, they're all a bit dusty, but at least they're all working. Another way around. Okay, so skip forwards a few days when the museum was open in the weekend, I started putting the pipes on and I realized because I've added some wheels to it, uh, well, <laughs> the wheels, I didn't realize, they got some like suspension on them and um, yeah, if I push it, they, they start, it starts, it starts all rocking all over the place. And that means if the load isn't even, it actually gets really, really unstable. So the first thing we need to do is fix that. So I've got to pull all the pipes out, have a look at the wheels and see if we can add a collar or something to make them rigid so they stay the way they're supposed to. Uh, by the way, I'm adding wheels to all of the ones that are going along here, just so I can wheel them around and move them around. So we need to get past them, then we can. 45 with an internal diameter of 25. 45 with an internal diameter of 25. Right, now it's time to put the LEDs on. I've got these little things that are 3D printed. They're supposed to sit there and have the LEDs on the inside. And then there's all these wires that are connected to the solenoids. And then we're gonna bring them up over the top and connect them up to the LED. But first we need to solder all of the current limiting resistors of the LEDs at the bottom of these things.
Okay, so a really stupid start with these things. I ended up wiring them all in backwards, so they're not working. However, I have just swapped one around and it does work and it looks pretty cool. The wires do look a little bit goofy, but it'll be fine, it'll be fine. Oh, this is actually gonna look pretty good. It's gonna look nice and understated. Oh, that's quite tasteful. It's quite tasteful, it's quite nice. Yeah. Time to stop that funky suspension problem from happening again by adding some sleeves. That'll do nicely. Yes. They should be over that side. Some of the pipes are a little bit kerfuffled, so it's a case of just gluing them on, but uh, that's all good. Well, would you look at that? It looks pretty awesome. As you can see, the lights aren't too overpowering. They do it just right. And the lights actually really help with tuning. When the museum was open yesterday, me and a volunteer called Chris popped all of the pipes in and then I gave it a tune. Chris was pushing on the buttons and I was wiggling around on the top. And what you do when you tune these is you don't actually listen to the tone. You're listening to the beat frequency. It's very similar to tuning oscillators on a synth or a guitar if you're tuning it with harmonics. If you're not sure what I'm on about, here's a video of me tuning the pipes. Don't listen directly to the pipes, but listen to the sound around it. It will sound like a wub 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 wub. from the note, the wub 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 will sound a lot quicker. Wub, 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 wub. And the closer you get to matching the note, that beat frequency slows down and goes wub, 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 wub. And then it matches and it stops beating and that is pretty much in tune. I haven't sorted out the keyboard control console yet, so I've unplugged all of the other pipes so we can listen to just these.
we're going to try something a little bit different. It's come up in the comments a few times and I want to give it a go. When I was making the flamethrower organ, one of the biggest issues was the fact that the butane was a different weight to air, which made it very hard to actually tune it. And if there was a slight bit of wind, it would actually make it detune because the air would be blowing into the pipes as well, which would be mixing up the butane in the air that's going through the pipes and that affected the tuning pretty massively. In the end, we ended up shooting the video indoors in an indoor skate park that was built into a church called Skaterham. They were very nice to let us shoot there. But yeah, that really saved it and it made it quite a bit more in tune. Well, with that thinking, I popped over to the party shop and got myself some helium. I've only got a little bottle because remember, helium is a relatively unsustainable resource. Basically, we are using it quicker than the earth is creating it. And it's got much more useful uses in CT machines and things like that. But for some reason, people still use them at Timmy's parties, <laughs> whatever. And because of that, we're only gonna try it once with a little bottle. I've 3D printed this nozzle that's gonna go on the front of it. <laughs> like so. Which means it fits nicely into the air inlet hole of the blower of the organ. So that means the helium's gonna go in there and get pumped around the whole of the organ. So first, let's play a chord and see what happens. interesting the weight difference affected the blower so much that it actually caused it to not work as well See, I think also the problem is when it comes out there, it comes out very cold, it affects the pressure. But we'll try and blow into this with a bit of helium in our lungs and see what happens. So, hello. There's only a slight change, but what I'm going to do is disconnect a lot of the pipes and just see what happens when we just play a few of the pipes. Let's see if that makes any difference. The reservoir went down quite dramatically when the helium went in. Either A, that's because it was cold when it went in, or B, I'm not 100% sure about the science of this, but potentially because it was a lighter gas, maybe it was less pressurized. I don't think that is actually how it works. I'm not sure how much of that is science because I did flunk out of university doing chemistry about six weeks in. <laughs> So if you remember in one of the last organ updates, I think it's number three, I was talking about how the organ pipe makes the noise. And if you remember, the gas escapes the wind chest and comes out of that little gap there and then gets sliced by this material to cause a bit of turbulence. We sent the helium up there that caused the turbulence. However, there probably wasn't enough helium to travel into here to affect the standing wave to make much of a difference. We could fill the room with helium, maybe. Anyway, let's finish off with another MIDI file. 